Hey, stay tuned. I want to tell you guys how I store these supers so that I can just grab them and they don't get all torn up by wax moth and all. A lot of you wonder, what do you do with your supers? You know, during the winter time, how do you keep them from getting destroyed by ants and wax moths once you harvest? So look at that. That's going to be great. Two, two deeps and a super. They need the, they need the super to put more nectar and honey up in that top for sure. Hey guys, what's up? David Burns here. And sometimes you walk through your bee yard and you notice things like a big clump of bees on the front of a hive like this. Now, not all the colonies are doing this. I don't really see it anywhere else except this one. It has three medium supers on, and this is an overwinter colony that overwintered in just a, a single uh, medium super, and they're expanding out. But now I've given them, I'm staying mediums, of course, and we inspected it not too long ago. But I want to show you guys, what do you do when you see a clump of bees out there? What does that tell you? You should be a beekeeper. You should be a citizen scientist. Immediately it tells you they need a little more room. <laughs> They've kicked some of the bees out onto the front porch because it's just too hot in there. And so what we're going to do today is just pop the top off and we're going to put another medium super on there that will give them more room. And I'll be surprised if we don't see this top super packed. All right, let's see what it looks like inside of here. See if I'm not mistaken and see if they're just not packed in here. Smoke them just a little bit. Smoke them a lot, they'll all run down. You won't get to see how many bees are up here. Oh yeah, wow, look at that. How many bees are in here on the top cover. And you can see how much they've drawn out this super. Even have drawn out every single one of them extremely wide. <laughs> yep, so now we're just going to throw another one. It's a super with drawn foundation on it. And it's seen its better days, but it's going to work for us. We're going to put this super on here. And that's going to give them more room to expand up into this super now. So that's how we solve the problem when we look and we see a whole bunch of bees on the outside of the entrance. Now the same thing is sort of happening here. In fact, look at this. Now it tells you they're sort of hot. So one of the things we can do here is not only check that super on top and maybe give them more room, but drop back here and why don't we just give them more air by opening this up. This is a screen, kind of like, a, it's below the screen, but it's a board that slips under below the screen. Look at that. That will help them not be so hot. Don't leave it there to blow away. But we still want to look at the hive and see how much room they have may need another super yet let's do it now before we open this top up please subscribe it means so much to me when you subscribe and give me a thumbs up click on the like button live stream every thursday night guys join me talk to me ask a bunch of questions oh yeah i'd say really really packed let me drop a super on there be right back yeah so here we go with a another super on top Give them some room to expand. That'll help them cool off. Plus, it will indeed be cooler now that we've taken the uh, corrugated plastic off that bottom board back there. What I'll do with the piece of plastic that we took off, I'm going to just set it right there. Let it get rained on and washed off. In the meantime, I'll put a cinder block to hold everything in place so I'll know where it is. What goes where? I believe it was this hive here. It may have been the one behind it back there. I can't remember. But anyway, when I opened it up, the first thing that I said on that video was, oh, wow, they need a super there packed. And they were packed. So in this case, uh, we're going to take a look again. Let me encourage you guys to know that you can't always tell. You cannot always tell based on the entrance. But there's a lot of bees coming and going. So it could very well be that they are indeed packed. Unless I've forgotten which hive I was looking at. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Ready for a super. Ready for a super. Look at that. Huh? Like that? I love it. I love to see bees just filling up, you know, the top of the frames like that. <laughs> Sorry about my camera adjustment. Let me grab me... Uh, Super will slap it on there. 
Hey, stay tuned. I want to tell you guys how I store these supers so that I can just grab them and they don't get all torn up by wax moth and all. A lot of you wonder, what do you do with your supers? You know, during the winter time, how do you keep them from getting destroyed by ants and wax moths once you harvest? So look at that. That's going to be great. Two, two deeps and a super. They need, the, they need the super to put more nectar and honey up in that top for sure. Now, before I tell you guys how I take care of my honey supers after I harvest them, be sure and check us out every Thursday night at 7 p.m. for live stream. Also, go to honeybeesonline.com where I have seven or more online beekeeping courses. They're powerful. They help you so much in, in your beekeeping endeavors. And also, please subscribe. Click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. Now, how do I handle my honey supers and keep them from getting destroyed by wax moth or small hive beetle. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways for you to take care of your honey supers once you harvest your honey. Uh, most of us take the honey super, put it right back on the hive to see if there's more nectar in that season for them to fill up the wet super. But if you're past that, then a lot of us set the super away from the hive. We don't want anybody to rob our hives, but we'll set it way out away from the hives and let the bees clean it up. That's one way to do it kind of they you know all supers after you extract spin out your honey the frames are kind of wet we call it a wet super and so what I do at that point is I will usually freeze them I have a big chest freezer and I'll just set all my supers in there I can put about 10 at a time in there for two or three days it kills any wax moth uh, eggs any small high beetle eggs and that way then I can take them out and I can store my supers in a cool, dry place free of insects. And I've got a cold room, a large room that stays about 70 degrees, kind of a work room actually, concrete floor. But um, I don't have bugs, ants, any wax moth going in there. So I can keep my super stacked up in there, keep the humidity kind of dry, about 50 to 60%. And then I can just keep my supers in there all winter long. Now, since I froze them first, I killed all the, uh, you know, pests that might be in there. And then when I need them, like you've seen today, I just grab them out of the room, pop them on, they're ready to go again. So that's the best way to do it. I don't like using paradichlorobenzene, benzenate. I don't like using mothballs. Um, just something about that. I mean, I'm not telling you that it's um, wrong, but it's something I personally don't want to use that uh, much chemical on my honey supers to protect them against wax moths. I know there's a lot of different ways to protect against wax moth, but just telling you how I do it without having to use any chemicals. Now, if you've stumbled on my channel for the first time and you're kind of interested in beekeeping, I have a great video for you, how to start beekeeping with 1.7 million views. Check it out. See you over there.